In this video, I'll show you how to improve the settling time of a servo positioning mechanism in two ways. First, using feed forward and response level, and then by using advanced auto tuning with model following control. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. This unloaded belt slide actuator is driven by a Sigma 7 motor through a helical style coupling. You can't see the belt because of the strip seal, which also prevents debris from entering the mechanism. I'm connected to the Sigma 7 amplifier with Sigma Win Plus and commanding the move through a program jog, although the controller could also be used to send this command. The tuning parameters are at default in tuningless mode, and visually the actuator seems to be working fine. But it's taking too long to stop at the final position. With an in-position window of one hundredth of a millimeter as measured at the motor encoder, you can see in the trace it's taking around 200 milliseconds to stop after the command. This is a relatively long time. The move is about 500 milliseconds, plus an extra 200 milliseconds to stop. And this is going to slow down the execution sequence significantly, so the settling time must be lower. For applications like this, it helps to determine how much settling time is acceptable and how large the in-position window should be for an acceptable result. The quick and easy way to get significant improvement in the settling time is to keep using the adaptive tuning list mode, which is on by default, but maximize the feed forward to 100% here in parameter PN109. And write that. Then raise the tuning list response level setting as high as possible without noise. I'll use program jog to get the motor running and gradually raise this level as high as possible without noisy operation. In this case, I'm able to go to the maximum and completed. Now a trace of the same move and with the cursors, I can see the settling time is now closer to 70 milliseconds instead of 200 milliseconds like it was before. Many times this is good enough, but if it's not good enough, then you'll want to run auto-tuning here under tuning, heed the warnings, and the first requirement is to turn off tuning less, okay, to change, and then cycle power like it says here. Now I can go back into tuning to execute, but before you jump to auto-tuning, you do first have to do moment of inertia identification. If that's grayed out, then you need to close any conflicting windows, or just close all of them. So I'll do that here. Now moment of inertia is available, and I'll execute. You can see with the confirm button that a move will be generated that goes both forward and reverse. So before you do this inertia identification, you got to be sure that there's room to move this 2.5 rotations. So I'm going to cancel this for now and go in here to jog. Okay. And jog forward just a little bit toward the middle of the actuator. Go back into moment of inertia this time. And as long as the speed and distance and all that is acceptable, you can usually leave this at default and go to the next step to start and next servo on, do the forward move, the reverse move, it's iterating to find the inertia ratio, I'll do forward again and reverse, again forward and again reverse, and the inertia ratio has been identified as 375. All right, servo off and next write the result into the parameter PN103 inertia ratio. Finish this function here with a software reset like power cycle. Execute that. Now before I run auto tuning I better drag the motor back near the starting position. Reverse. That looks good. A couple of checks before you run auto tuning. First the value of position completed width PN522 should be set to a reasonable value for the application 
as it has a significant effect on the auto-tuning result. I have it set to 2796 encoder pulses, which is one hundredth of a millimeter in this mechanism. It's also recommended to turn off mode switch in parameter PN10C by raising the torque level to 800 percent and right. And in fact, there are a number of preliminary checks for auto-tuning listed in the manual. And now we are ready for auto-tuning with position reference input from program jog. Mode selection 2 mentions model following control. Mode selection 3 also uses model following control, even though it's not mentioned here. But mode 1 does not. So I'll stick with the default mode 2 for positioning. Remember that model following control allows the position error to build up in order to get a better prediction of the commanded move trajectory. The motor will catch up toward the end of the move, resulting in a much lower settling time. This is a belt mechanism, so we'll choose that. Uh, generally, we do recommend start tuning using the default tuning parameters. Yeah, next, and yes, to confirm, confirm the inertia ratio. Before I start tuning, let's get that move running with program jog. Execute and start tuning. It's looking for oscillation. It's searching for gains now. Looks like it just applied a notch filter and anti-resonance adjustment. And tuning is completed. A new trace reveals the settling time has been reduced to a very negligible amount. With the cursors, I'm measuring about 3 milliseconds. Even a few milliseconds is usually acceptable, considering the scan time interval in the machine controller. A faster settling time is unlikely to improve the speed of the machine process. And finally, a parameter compared to defaults gives a good summary of the gains, moment of inertia, model following control, anti-resonance, and all of the different tuning features that have been enabled through the advanced auto-tuning function. Thank you for watching this video. Please note that the product manual contains a detailed section on tuning. Additionally, Yaskawa offers free, hands-on, self-guided video training covering the basics of Sigma Win Plus and servo tuning at yaskawa.com slash self-guided. We also offer a live tuning lab where you could come in and tune a mechanism like this yourself with the guidance of the instructor. For more information, please go to yaskawa.com.